So with Thanksgiving now over, and most of the turkey's gone, our bellies are full and the football games are done, we enter a season that we're all too familiar with, which is the Advent Christmas Epiphany season. Tis a season where we visit the age-old story of a baby born in a manger with familiar songs, familiar traditions, and foods that help us celebrate. I'm not one who has an issue with Christmas music. So, the more we sing it, the merrier we'll be. But still, we experience each retelling of this story anew, as we come to visit this time with another year in our rearview mirror and with it an awareness of things lost and things found and things realized. So we come home, back to our familiar beginning of the Christmas year, older, wiser, and maybe more hopeful and thankful for what God has provided and where God is leading us in a new season. I thought this was a fitting series, Come Home, especially after Thanksgiving when most of us or many of us have family that has either, we've either visited them or they've come home and visited here. But Come Home is a, it's a, it's a comfort to think of through the holidays. Come Home for Christmas is an invitation to start over while also remembering who we are. It's an invitation to a banquet feast with a table of grace filled to overflowing. It's an invitation to remember what we've been through and remember that no matter what, God calls us to come home where we are cherished and loved. My first year planning for the Advent season and looking at what the lectionary series was and what I was to speak on I remember thinking, why are we reading about destruction and death? It's almost Christmas. We should be reading about the joy of the coming birth of the baby of Jesus. And it's funny how we don't start with the Christmas story. No, we start with the warning signs, with the forecast for cloudy skies ahead. We start with a prophetic call to look at the world that we inhabit. How close are we to the kingdom we proclaim week after week? How close are we to this coming on earth as it is in heaven for which we pray regularly? Advent is about being honest but not hopeless. Advent is about the joy of longing for home, the kind of home that will complete us, the kind of home that will transform the world. It's about helping us remember that we have a mission and a hope. We're people who see God at work in this world, and we're partners in that remaking. We are the people mentoring people for Christ. And many people travel for the Thanksgiving holiday, with many coming home to be with family. So what do we do when we get ready to go home? Often, we make lists. We put things in order. We set our minds on our destination. So as we decorate our sanctuaries, we are painting a portrait of the kingdom, light and color and vibrantly green with life, even in winter. Our arms are open to receive those who come, maybe for the first time, maybe old friends, maybe the usual crowd, but all are welcome in God's home, our kingdom home. Now, light, of course, is crucial to Advent. We light the candles on the reef, not to count down to Christmas, but as a beacon to call us home. We'll leave the light on for you. is isn't just a slogan for a hotel chain, but a gospel promise that we will find our way by the light that is Jesus Christ and now is reflected in the body of Christ, the church. But enough beating around the bush. Let's take a look at our scripture for the day. I'm going to invite you to turn to Luke chapter 21. And we're going to be looking at verses 25 to 36. It's on page 735 in the Pew Bible. Or use your phone. But open up, the, open up to the book of Luke chapter 21. 
We're going to be looking at verses 25 to 36, and we're going to read it responsively. I'm going to read the first one, you read the second one, and we're going to go back and forth until we're go- we make it through all of these verses. Starting with verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Verse 26, please. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Verse 28. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. Verse 30, please. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Verse 32. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Verse 34. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36. God, waiting is sometimes hard. Waiting for something as wonderful as the return of Jesus is also very exciting. While we are waiting, help our families to show and share your love to all people. Let us start here today, Lord. So Holy Spirit, come down and be in in amongst each one of us and show us what it is we need to hear from this message today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it is almost Christmas. And it's time to go home, time to get ready to go home, to think about going home or being home as everyone comes to you. But then you realize there's work to be done, preparations to be made, cleaning up has to happen. I can remember sitting in my office on a Saturday, finishing up another sermon preparation, and I looked out at our neighbor's lawn, where not too long ago he had spent hours picking up all the leaves. Now in New Jersey, we wouldn't have snow this early. It's still kind of warm. We, you have days in December, even around Christmas, that you can walk outside and it, well, I can walk outside in a t-shirt. So it's still kind of warm. Snow is, this much snow is unusual. Our neighbor was a fanatic when it came to his yard. He bought a lawnmower with headlights, so no matter what time he got home from work, he could mow his yard. Frequently through the summer, we would be sitting down and watch TV, and he would be outside mowing his yard. That's how fanatical he was about his yard. Leaves were not a thing in his yard. And if a leaf dropped, he would be out there with his son raking the whole yard to clean it up. So, I, like I said, I remember looking out the window at his yard, and he had just cleaned it up. But you couldn't tell. It didn't look like it because the next carpet of crunchy brown had fallen and covered the green grass almost completely. And that meant that the leaves had to be picked up again soon. If it wasn't that afternoon, then they would have to be removed before snow falls or in the spring when it's time to start mowing again. The problem is that while the trees in his yard were bare, the trees in our yard were still full with the little brown crunchy dudes hanging on to the branches. And of course, our leaves wouldn't fall straight down on our yard, but they would waft across into his yard. So most of what he was cleaning up was from our yard. And I wondered if that loving your neighbor thing applied to neighbor's trees in the fall. I mean, Surely Jesus would give him a pass on grumbling about the neighbors and the yard work, don't you think? 
No. In fact, Jesus tells us to look at the trees, the fig trees and all the trees, he says. Look at all those leaves, he says to us. You're going to have to pick them up, yours and your neighbors both. Look at the trees indeed. But the, is that why we're called to be arborists this Advent season? I mean, watching the leaves fall, being at the ready like my neighbor, ready to pounce on every single leaf that would dare to litter our lawns? Or does Jesus have something else in mind? Now, I'm not sure how you'll receive this sort of message on the first Sunday of Advent. I mean, I'm sure you're expecting to hear the preliminaries of the Christmas story. Maybe an angel announcement, maybe a song of transformation, maybe a dream or a journey or a royal decree, but certainly not people fainting with fear and foreboding. I'm not sure I'm up to foreboding. I mean, we just don't forebode anymore, do we? I mean, shoot, we get movies about the end of the world that are pretty impressive in their spe- with their special effects, and we watch them for entertainment. So if Jesus is trying to scare us, he better start doing a better job of it. No, God, I'm just kidding. I'm making a point. Don't take me seriously. Please don't take me seriously. But if you take a second look at today's verses, they imply something different. Maybe it isn't fear that Jesus is trying to instill. Maybe it's something altogether different. Maybe it's the opposite. And what is opposite of fear? Hope. Look at the trees, he says. He's telling us to look for signs of growth, even in in a dying season, to look for signs of life, even in a dreary landscape. Stand up. And raise your heads, he says to us. Now, it's our natural instinct when things are going badly, when there's a difficult moment, that we want to keep our heads down. But Jesus tells us to raise our heads, to look up, to trust, to have confidence. He's telling us to pay attention, to head home, to home we long for, to the home we hope for, the home we live for. It's time to go home. Oh, that's a tricky one at any time of the year, but with all the distractions of the holidays, it's even more difficult. Pay attention, he says. But I have all these things to accomplish. I have, I've got my lists to fulfill, places to go and things to do. Pay attention, he says. But to what? To the end times? No thanks. The folks that are all wrapped up in that kind of thing seem a little, they seem odd, a little bit out of touch, and frankly, they seem to have their priorities all messed up. So if the message is take care of yourself and stay clean so that you can come out well at the end, I'm really not that interested. Pay attention, he says. Advent is a multi-layered time. There's the remembrance and the desire to recapture the birth of the baby again, And we really want to hear that angel song and believe that if even for a moment, peace on earth is within the realm of possibility. Well, we look back to what's been done for us, but at the same time, the scriptures remind us that there's still something coming on the horizon. We do look for the coming of the kingdom when the lion shall lie down with the lamb, when we will beat our swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, when we will study war no more. There is a someday out there toward which we lean and for which we hope. Advent is looking forward as well as looking back. Pay attention, he says. Look at the trees, he says. But what if there's one more layer? What if there's one more direction in addition to back and forward? What if there is an around? Look around. Look up, look down, or just look. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down, so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss Him. That's the amazing thing about this season. There are glimpses of the kingdom that appear when you least expect it. There are sightings of the Savior in the twinkling of the eyes, the hesitant thank yous and the gasps of wonder through this season. 
in the late night conversations of scattered family members trying to figure out what might be next. There are prayers of hope and of love and embrace of peace that brings tears to our eyes if we pay attention. Jeremiah says it simply, The days are surely coming, says the Lord. I will cause a righteous branch to spring up. A branch? No, a branch. Not just any branch. Not the branches that fall with the leaves that cover the lawn. Not the branches from a tree too old to sustain them anymore. Not those dead things. The branches higher up are still growing, still producing, still reaching for a heaven only trees know how to hope for. It's not the dead branch of the past we cling to that we hope for. It's the new growth. God will cause, will cause a branch to spring up. There's more to come, more hope to be revealed, more justice to be executed, more righteousness to cover the land like the leaves on my neighbor's lawn. Yeah, when you pay attention, you see a mess you need to clean up, and that can be tiring. But you also see life, dying and rising life, enough to give you hope in a dreary season and a call to go home, to go forward by going back, or maybe to go back by going forward. It's a call to be ready, to make ready, to go home. The first Sunday of Advent, or the Sunday of hope in some traditions, or known as the prophecy candle in others, It's the reminder that it is time to head home. To head home to something that we're familiar with. Something that we long for and that we hope for. It's a home with Jesus. It's time to head home with Jesus. Let's pray. Faithful God, our normal rhythm is rushing. We're thankful for this season of Advent as a reminder to pause, wait, and anticipate your miraculous ways that are often found in unexpected places. May we pay attention this week to signs of your coming kingdom. May we prepare to come home with you, to be amongst you and to be around you. Help lead us and guide us on that trip home, we pray. Amen. Friends, in this season of preparation as we prepare for the coming of our long expected Jesus, let us also prepare to come home, to come home with Jesus. So as we leave here today, I ask that you leave with your faces lifted upward, looking for the new life that awaits us, anticipating the newness that each Advent season brings us. So go with the hope and confidence in knowing that God has come so that we might have life everlasting. So go with hope in your heart as we look to home. Amen.